Hello, greetings. Uh, so, this ayat, Surah Azab, ayat by mistake. So, you know, we Shias, I wondered why we got it from the Sunnis. Why would the Sunnis say that uh, it was a mistake by Umar ibn Khattab? Or if the caliphs went there and uh, they injured or whatever happened, like one ex-friend was telling me a Muslima, then it is a mistake, right? So I don't have any political agenda, uh, neither do I want to get swayed by my Shia Islam. Muslims, if one has now come up as a hero, so many shaheeds martyred, and uh, so much has happened. We have whatever hypocrites, or may God, uh, you know, bring them on the right path, or something like this. We uh, there are prayers, although hypocrisy is a terrible crime, sin in Islam. So we're going to examine this ayat where the Shias over overlook this verse because maybe they don't understand how could a prophet who is infallible and if he made a mistake this ayat this part of his making a mistake so it's not a uh, So in what case did he make a mistake? Our Shias must have known this from all angle, in-depth research. So I don't want uh, any, uh, if a great Shia hero, brave man comes up, I don't want that to get into the way of my truth-seeking as a sincere truth seeker. So here, oh sorry, it's not, uh, it's not focusing and my eyes are also hurting, as maybe your eyes if you're going to watch this video. So this is from Surah Azab again, Ayat 5. Let your adopted children, <clears throat> let your adopted children keep their family names. That is more just in the sight of Allah. But if you do not know their fathers, then they are simply your fellow believers. But if you do not know their fathers, then they are simply your fellow believers and close associates. There is no blame on you for what you do by mistake, but only for what you do intentionally. And Allah is all forgiving, most merciful. Now we were told whatever the Prophet does is uh, God conscious, he's, he's been God conscious. He cannot even make an unintentional mistake but, and if you were to, that is out of the question, if you were to make an unintentional mistake that God will correct him. So how come here he's, uh, it's about the Prophet. And I know my Shia ulamas for years have studied the whole Quran and all this I've already said, their, uh, you know, uh, their lives were under threat and all this, right? So I tell myself, let's not get carried away by politics or if a hero comes up in uh, Pakistan and how he survived as a Shia, let's not get carried away by that. We're going to look at the text.
here there are only you these are only your basis assertions okay and uh, yes that's uh, this was a uh, part of uh, verse 4 that I was reading through Surah Zab let your adopted children give their family names that is more just in the sight of Allah but if you do not know the fathers then they are simply your fellow believers and close associates there's no blame on you <clears throat> for what you do by mistake but only for what you do intentionally now let's see if the Prophet, again I'm going through this whether this unintentional mistake by Prophet Muhammad what was the motive behind this? I have to look at it from all sides so was this good was this mistake that our Prophet was so great <clears throat> that he even adopt he even embraced a pagan he he as a human being and he as the messenger of Allah he as a uh, how do we break this up but then you see we cannot break it up like this we say here in Surah Tahrim Again, he, uh, he, to please his wives, he promised them, but then uh, he said, a good husband would, a good husband. Surah Tahrim. A good husband would, right? A good human being would tell his wives, no, no, I'll, okay, you, or I'm, fa I'm really, uh, uh, please, okay, f forg uh, uh, please, uh, I will not do this again. Oh, Prophet, why do you prohibit yourself from what Allah has made lawful to you or for you, seeking to please your wives? Why do you make unlawful? Why do you prohibit yourself what Allah has made lawful for you, seeking the approval of your wives? And Allah is forgiving and merciful. Allah has already ordained for you believers. Now He brings believers in. So we are quite, uh, the men are quite happy. Yeah, yeah, if our, if our wives are on our heads. So for these men believers, or maybe all female, no, no, the females, uh, what is there for the females? There is a big honor for the females if they are obedient to Allah and His messenger and their husbands. Allah has already ordained for you believers uh, the way to absolve yourselves from your oaths. Sorry, excuse me. I could not get funnier than this, could I? Yeah, I can. Uh, I'm going crazy. I'm losing sea. I will find way too deep over you. You'll always be the one. You were the first. You'll be the last. I'm going oceans up. Okay, sorry, acting funny. So this, ooh, I still cannot figure this out. No, 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 she has. I beg of, please see this mistake uh, so you know we had a curse on ourselves 
Now the Sunni were saying that, uh, okay, maybe Umar made a mistake. It was just a mistake. Or how can it be a mistake that he's gone to Fatima Zahra's house and saying that I'm going to burn your house and crush it under uh, between the door and the wall and given her a miscarriage? How can that be a mistake? Omar also mistake uh, that poor guys just wanted to alleviate the prophet's uh, pain. He was in a lot of pain, but he wanted uh, his last will to write, give him pen and paper to write something. Uh, it just doesn't, uh, you know, these things. Okay, mistake, mistake. So we were cursed by this mistake thing through the, 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 the Sunni Muslims and their hadiths were saying, Battle of Jamal mistake, so many people died mistakes, Muslims, killing Muslims died mistake, Caliph and Ummul Mu'mineen, Aisha, instigated with Zubair, Ibn Zubair and uh, who the, was the other one? Or Zubair ibn, who was it? Anyhow, I can't remember now properly. I haven't gone through it. Mistake, mistake, mistake. Because you know why this, these Sunnis have not been able to? Because scientifically, if you look at it, and what our Shia say that Rasulullah was infallible. He could not do, well, he could make a, uh, no, he couldn't make a mistake. So this curse has been following us for 1400 years. Now, I started to wonder what we could have done wrong, we Shias. That our own Muslims are after us now. So they said, no, these are hypocrites, and they followed the hypocr hypocrites. It's not their fault, the Sunni Muslims. And we couldn't reconcile. And still there are some people after our lives, some Muslims, and all this. Okay, wife. Okay, so what he does, where shall I go? How shall I tell you? But as, please forgive my performance, my slowness, and uh, my lack of eloquence. Remember when the Prophet had once confided something to one of his wives and she disclosed it to another wife. Here mistake where uh, no here was like you've made an oath and you believers can so believers can absolve you are allowed. Oh I made a mistake, wife. Uh, no, God has just uh, sent Rasulullah the message uh, that we can all uh, swear by, uh, okay, just swear. I swear I won't do it again, I swear. Or, uh, you know, I won't do it again. I just won't do it anymore. Okay? I won't do it. The Prophet is saying, I won't do it to his wives. So the Shia say, no, this is a husband now. Husband. But God is saying, O Prophet, here, Ya Ayyun Nabi, Ayyuha. Us. Ya Ayyuh Nabi, O Prophet, not O husband of your wives,
No, I am not going back to Shia Islam. And I am not politically in any way. I have risked my life here. I have uh, started to tell people, like, you know, I am an ex-Muslim, risking my life here, in the hospital, wherever I can. I just say it because I want to be honest, if they want to kill me. But let me just give you, open your eyes to this. I was Allah Marashi Turabi's prayer. I survived. <laughs> After losing a child of the firstborn, my, fa- my mother was not conceiving somehow another child until uh, my father approached Allah Marashi Turabi. You can Google search him if you are. Uh, you know, uh, a Westerner or a European, or you haven't heard of him? Allama Rashid Dorabi. And uh, so I've had to do this. This cannot escape. I mean, t- logically, even if I apply the Shia logic and reasoning and all this, it uh, doesn't. Somehow, uh, uh, I can't. I can't anymore get it. So it has nothing to do with hypocrites now. Shias being hypocrites, some Shias, or my yeah, I my sentiments for the oppressed of Pakistan Shias. I was a Shia. Of course, my heart is going to cry out for them. But I still want to tell you that. <gasps> This was, uh, look at, it just doesn't uh, uh, make sense to me now that I know. Uh, For the believers, you can absolve. So, how how do our, uh, Allah has already ordained for you, for you. What does it say? Indeed, Allah has already the desolation of your oaths, and Allah is your protector, and He is the all knowing always. And no, it doesn't say believers, but maybe the Arabic, I don't know the way it's written, that's why they have to put Muslims here. Allah is already ordained for you. The way to absolve yourself from your oaths. So he's shown you through this prophet that you can absolve, and he's told the prophet, uh, you know, since you've made an oath, you oaths. Indeed, has ordained Allah for you the dissolution. of your oaths. Your oaths. Your oaths. <laughs> your oaths. Sorry, I'm going to continue later.